have you ever wondered what is actually going on in politics? Like, who's actually winning? Because there's fake news this, and there's complete fallacy over here, and uh, propaganda over there, and every news organization is taking any information that they get, and not every, but a large portion of them are manipulating that to serve their needs as a business, which is to make profit and put forth whatever agenda is going to be beneficial to them, not be objective, not be truthful, not be honest. Well, I wanted to look at the source of the data. Think, for example, if your boss is standing over your shoulder versus your boss is on vacation. How is your behavior different? And in this video, we take a look at the search volume on the two biggest sites in the, excuse me, in the planet over a time series on Google and YouTube to see who's actually more popular. And with that being said, if this is your first time here, what's good? My name is Sam, and for those of you who are returning, it is good to freaking see you. Uh, today is 7-6, uh, so July 6th. Um, so the two most popular sites on the planet and this is according to each one measures it slightly differently. This is Alexa.com, which is owned by uh, Amazon, purchased a number of years ago. And then SimilarWeb, they, they both do some type of web analytics uh, research for ranking uh, sites and uh, other purposes. And Google.com is number one, and YouTube.com is number two. Also interesting thing is Google and YouTube are the uh, most visited sites on the planet, but also they're the biggest search engines on the planet. Google's number one and YouTube is number two in terms of search volume, which makes sense if they're the, the top sites, right? But also they have the experience of Google in terms of indexing the web and then putting forth so people can uh, actually find it. And before somebody leaves a comment down below that says like search volume doesn't indicate whether somebody is going to vote or not vote, Take a look at the generations by demographics. So I pulled this up here. By the way, leave a comment down below and ask questions. I'm happy to answer them. I uh, might actually do a QA and a at the end of the videos. Um, but this is the breakdown of the demographics and their proportion of the total population here, right? So we've got the greatest generation born for 1928. And that's just about you know two-thirds of 1% of the total population of roughly 330 million people, right? But the Generation X, Millennials, and Gen Z, these in aggregate is about 70%, right? We've got 20, 20, 20, so that's 60 plus another almost uh, 10 here. So almost 70% of the population is below 55. But, but what's the average age of the people in the Senate? So let me give you a little hint. It's over 55. <laughs> so we're up to see some very, very interesting changes in um, government over the next, you know, one to six years. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how, how this plays out. This is the uh, first time where uh, the, the that has taken place, where we've ha had that shift, right? And... This is 70%, right, 69%, but remember, like, not all of the uh, uh, Gen Z is going to be voting, right? And not all of any generation is going to be voting, but there's also uh, indicators, if you look at Pew Research, that they are the uh, generations Gen Z and millennials are turning out in much higher numbers as a percentage of the total population in terms of like a, a, a measure of engagement of, of their participation rate in politics. If you look at the midterm election in 2018, if you look at the uh, general election in 2016, this is all data you can pull from uh, Pew Research or other uh, research sources, and you can see that. So let's dive right into the actual data. So uh, Google Trends actually puts all this together for us. So Google Trends allows us to see the search term for YouTube and the search term for Google. So in this case, we put in Donald Trump and Joe Biden uh, on YouTube right over here. This is the YouTube search and this is the web search. And we take a look at the 12 month, the three month, and the 30 day to see who is actually 
more popular, right? Like as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if your boss is standing over your shoulder, your behavior is one way. When your boss is on vacation, your behavior is a different way. We want to understand the truest form of what is happening, right? We don't want to play this game of telephone where the media takes whatever is said, whatever is heard, whatever data is put forth, and twists it and manipulates it to their own benefit that has nothing to do with the truth, that has nothing to do with the essence of what was actually happening, just solely to benefit themselves and their agenda. So we want to know what's actually happening. Like, where is the heartbeat of America? So given that these are the two largest sites in the planet, and if you look at some of the polling data that comes out from these companies, we're not even going to talk about all the biases that come in from different ways of polling, sampling methodology, how the questions were asked, the, the, the way the uh, data was gathered, any of that, right? Because that all creates biases. We'll just assume that was perfect. Then you have a sample size of 763 people. Let me say it again. Then you have a sample size of 763 people. Sample size of 763 people. And this is supposed to represent a national poll or a statewide poll. Uh, this is this is accurate. This is what actually happens. Now, when we go to Google, when we go to YouTube, we have millions upon millions of searches for each candidate in the state. And you may be thinking, well, that doesn't mean that, that they're going to win. Uh, I actually went back and... Uh, back tested this in the 2016 election with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And the same thing played out in that election too. We know how inaccurate the polls were in 2016. That was the early indicator of how incredibly biased the media is and how fraught with biases and not only from the structure of the sampling, and polling or surveying or the questions and all that. Not even, not that, right? That's one piece, right? But then the individual or organization who's putting it together also has their own biases. And that is, is amplified on top of the horrible structure of gathering data. When you have something like the fucking internet in 2020 and you can look at the data yourself, you don't have to go through some third party play telephone of actual reality. You can go to reality of what people are actually doing at home when they're searching. And that's what we did. And we looked at three different time periods. So I put that together over here and what we can see at the 12 month mark on the uh, web search is Biden actually had a little bit of a uh, win right here where he Almost, it, it looks like he had a fundamental shift. He had some type of attention in, in March, right? And that must have been when everybody else dropped out or something. And he got attention. It was greater than what Trump had. But then he's dropped back down. And it's just been consistently lower than what Trump's had over the last 12 months. We do have a decent amount of time to go until November. Uh, but if you look over here at the actual search data on average, there's three searches for Donald Trump before there's one search for Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden does get slightly better at the three month mark where there's, you know, two and a half searches roughly, or slightly over two searches, right? 2.1 maybe searches for uh, Trump versus uh, Joe Biden. And then at the one month mark, uh, it gets closer to back to the, almost the three to one, uh, like 2.75 roughly or something like that, to 2.25 uh, to um, to one search for Biden. Uh, very similar over on YouTube, but Joe Biden actually has more interest on YouTube. And w when you think about it, right, let's jump back over here to the population. Generation X is... 65 to 80, right? 1965 to 1980, which means that they're the oldest is about 55 years old and the youngest is 40, right? Where do people who are below the age of 40, right? Millennials and Gen Z turn to for a lot of their information. 
Well, obviously it's the internet, right? But what specific source? Well, they turn to YouTube and they just search for whatever they're looking for, whether it's trying to, like you're trying to make a pen or you're trying to do brain surgery or you're trying to look up what's happening in the world. Uh, so there may be more curiosity there um, because Joe Biden does a lot better on YouTube when you look at this. Uh, four points better on the 12 month mark, right? He, he was at 25 versus 29. Uh, when you look at the three month mark, he is doing about seven points better. Uh, and then when you look at the 30 day, he is also doing about seven points better uh, during that time during that time period. So let's jump back over here and just take a look at these really quickly so you get to see uh, the data for yourself. You can also go look at this. Uh, so this is the, um, that's the 90 day we were just looking at. Now we're gonna look at the 12 month. You can see there was a fundamental shift right here where it went up for Biden. Uh, it looks like he's kind of been trending down in all honesty. Looks like he's been trending down slightly where Trump looks like he's been trending down and maybe just had an uptick more recently. Uh, when we look at the 90 day, we can see that there's something going on with uh, Trump in um, where after that shift in May, it looks like, and then 90 days, um, Joe Biden hasn't been able to break back through where he's broken through several times before that in the past 90 days, but something in the end of May happened, right, about 40 days ago or something, um, where he hasn't been able to get back up the amount of interest that um, Donald Trump has. Now, let's come down to the 30 day here. Uh, the 30-day, actually, it looks like he did a touch right here where it was about even. Actually, he was, he was beating here. But throughout the rest of this time period, he's been losing substantially. And over the 4th of July, Trump had a lot more attention. So if you think about what attention is in the 21st century, right? Attention is the currency. You need to have attention to tell your message. You need to have attention to sell your product. You need to have attention to accomplish something. If you want to impact the world in a way, whatever that is, if you want to feed penguins or fucking like save the world from, you know, whatever it is, you need attention. Whoever is better at garnering attention through being able to tell their message to the world wins. I've been studying this now for several years now, uh, and it continues to play out this way. Uh, it could be different. Um, it supported it in 2016, but we have several more months to go to see if this is going to be the case. If you guys want to check out the actual website traffic, right? We, we look at the website traffic for Donald Trump and Joe Biden to see what website's more popular. Again, if you have a more popular website, what happens? Not only do you have like more people on your site, you have more opportunity to capture their email address. You have more opportunity to get donations. You have more opportunity to tell your story, right? And that's what you need to do in the 21st century. So if you want to check out that video, go back to the channel. Uh, it's a couple of videos ago. Check it out. Let me know what your thoughts are. Another video coming up later this week. Also, we're going to have the California primaries coming up in a couple of days. So make sure you press that subscribe button and that bell notification so YouTube will notify you when I post a video. Appreciate you guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions about what I'm doing, let me know down below in the comment section. Or even better, jump over to Instagram and say what's good. Appreciate you guys. Peace.